My name is Susanna Playstead and I'm an architect evangelist at Salesforce. Today I'm going to share an Einstein GPT system landscape with you. So let's get into it. This level one documentation and implementation diagram shows the mix of Salesforce products and other technology systems that are a part of Einstein GPT. Let's start at the top of this diagram. With Einstein GPT, we can leverage generative AI right in our existing flow of work, whether that's Sales Cloud or Service Cloud or one of our other applications. And since the Einstein generative stack is connected to the customer 360, it can continuously learn based on what's actually happening in your org. Next, we have our human in the loop. So in a system landscape, we don't typically see a person or a user, but in generative AI, the user is an incredibly important part of the system. So they're the person that reviews what gets generated by the AI and gives feedback so the AI can continuously improve. Next up, we have what you came here for, the Einstein generative AI stack. Now this dotted and dashed line represents the Einstein GPT trust boundary. Let's start on the left. First, we have our generative services and apps. These are the features that are surfaced to builders on the platform so that you can configure Einstein GPT and customize prompts for your business. Next, we have our foundational services. These are what fuel those generative services and apps that you can see from the UI. Our foundational services include our generative AI gateway, which handles communication with our hosted and external large language models and takes care of authentication, usage tracking, and also content moderation like toxicity and bias scoring. This is also where data masking and demasking happen so that we are never sending sensitive information directly to any model. Here is also where we have our inference engine. So these are the repeatable steps that are performed anytime we execute a generation task. This includes data retrieval, prompt retrieval, and of course, prompt completion before sending it to the large language model. And if you need to reference additional data that isn't a part of the prompt, maybe knowledge articles, we can use something called domain adaptation, which supports the ingestion of data specific to your org that was not a part of the prompt itself. Okay, so we've talked about all of these services, but let's get into the models. Einstein GPT supports foundational models like CodeGen. That's the model that we created at Salesforce to generate code. And we also have models that we're hosting on the Salesforce infrastructure like Anthropic and Cohere. And if you want to leverage a model that's not hosted in Salesforce, Einstein GPT can connect to a variety of additional models that exist outside our AI stack. Now, when going outside the trust layer, we leverage TLS for prompt encryption in transit and leverage a zero retention architecture to ensure that customer data is never stored outside of Salesforce. Now, we all know that the quality of the response from a large language model depends on the quality of what goes into it. So let's not forget Einstein GPT's data sources. They can include data from our transactional database or from Data Cloud's data lake. And the foundation of Einstein GPT is Hyperforce, our trusted public cloud infrastructure where all of our services are hosted. Okay, that's it. Einstein GPT architecture in less than four minutes. I hope that you enjoyed today's video and I hope to see you back here very soon.